I'm back here with Chris. Chris, um, before we go back downstairs to kind of watch that process, uh, we're up here in this little breezeway. Mm -hmm. um, and as I understand it, this is where the old oil tank is. So tell me about kind of where, where it is and what they're going to do with it. Uh, we believe so. We're not exactly sure where it is. That, that's one of the big issues for the homeowner and, and part of the compelling reasons that they decided to do this conversion. It is under the concrete here somewhere. It was apparently originally an underground tank. Um, when the patio was redone with concrete, it was just basically paved over. So it's a serious liability and potential hazard for the homeowner that they really don't want to deal with anymore. So um, the homeowner has gotten several quotes for remediation. It appears like the best option is going to be to abandon it in place. What that means is that instead of having to destroy this entire patio, remove the tank, they should be able to cut a small patch within the patio pump the oil out, send someone in to do uh, decontamination on the inside. Once we get a clean bill of health back from um, the soil testing, etc., it should be able to be filled with concrete, certified and abandoned in place. By state law, the oil fill pipe to the old oil tank must be secured and labeled against any mistaken deliveries, even though the owners have already canceled any future service calls. The propane service provider cements a cap over the fill pipe and attaches a warning label, so there's no chance of a mistake. We're going to go back downstairs and take a look at where the piping comes in with the oil and how that's going to get capped off. So we'll just go do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're back down to the basement. Chris, the uh, piping from the tank, the oil tank, is coming into this, coming under this slab and popping up right here. Tell us kind of what the homeowner can expect in terms of uh, getting this uh, remediated. Yeah, these are the lines which come from the oil tank and feed the oil burner. And unfortunately, they are buried in the concrete. Uh, there's a new law which is going to take effect in this state next year which would exclusively prohibit this type of installation. So even if the homeowner was to keep the oil system or replace the underground tank with something above ground, this type of oil line installation is not going to be possible. So fundamentally what will happen is, depending upon the local authority having jurisdiction and what their opinion is, they could be abandoned in place, blown out with compressed air, cut and left in place, or they may have to be jackhammered out of the floor and physically removed. Well, all right. Well, we'll hope for the best for the homeowner on that score. Thank you. With the bulk of the new boiler system done and ready to connect to the home's mechanical systems, the crew is now ready to remove the old boiler and the maze of pipes and valves overhead. After shutting off the supply lines to the unit, the crew runs the boiler to burn off any oil that remains in the system. They then drain as much water as they can before using a recip saw to cut the copper water pipes serving the boiler and the indirect water heater. Once free, the 400-pound boiler has to be carefully hoisted out of the basement with a small crane. The crew also removes the condenser tank, which they'll reuse in the new system. At last, all of the cuts have been made to remove the bulk of the old setup, creating much more headroom in the basement. Once the boiler is removed, the crew can more easily disconnect and move the 40-gallon indirect water heater to its new location in the new setup. Placing it against the wall not only gets the tank out of the way, but it makes it far easier to connect to the new boiler and deliver reliable domestic hot water. Now the crew can disconnect and bring propane to the new boiler using a flexible yet tough reinforced pipe and fitting system. Meanwhile, the indirect water heater is tied to the new system by copper water pipes and fittings crimped against leaks by the ProPress machine. The conversion is complete, and what a difference from when the process started. We've been able to reuse some equipment and move the entire setup out of the way, creating new opportunities for the owners to use their basement and enjoy the benefits of their new propane boiler. Chris, it looks like we're just about ready to go here. Everything seems to be hooked up. We've, we've removed or, or replaced the, uh, the water heater over here so it's much closer to the boiler, mm -hmm. clears up a lot of floor space. But before we get to kind of uh, the big moment, tell us what you did with the old equipment, the, the copper wiring, the unit, the boiler. What happened to that? The old equipment was taken away. It will not wind up in a landfill. Uh, we recycle the copper and the cast iron at a local scrap metal dealer. Uh, lots changed here since yesterday. Tell us a little bit about some things that you've done to get this hooked up. A lot cleaner now. Um, we've got our system basically set up. Uh, our electrician has come by and made the final electrical connections. Same thing with our plumber. He's come by and made our final plumbing connections. Inspector has been out, seen, inspected, and signed off. And at this point, we're ready to fire off. Okay. And it seems like a big moment. Is there some big switch that we throw or something? Or what? Uh, there is a switch. Uh, okay. The switch right here on the wall. And once we flip it, all right, all We're right, running. there we go. That's uh, much quieter. Much quieter, yeah. yes. <laughs> so this thing's humming, ready to go. It's ready to mm -hmm. deliver hot water and space heat when the owners call for it, mm -hmm. and much more efficiently. Yes, much more. Okay. 
Excellent. Well, thanks, Chris. Jeff tests the new system against some of the same metrics as the old oil boiler. Using a similar probe but far more sophisticated equipment, he confirms that the new propane fuel boiler's performance and efficiencies are well within allowable tolerances. Chris and his crew have cleared out. We've hooked up the new boiler and taken out the old equipment. Everything's been tested and inspected, and now it's just waiting for the homeowners to call for hot water or space heating. Now, the cost of this conversion was about six or $7,000, which is about normal, maybe a little less because they were able to reuse the water heater and they had some existing piping and electrical down in the basement. Uh, that doesn't count the six to $10,000 the owners are gonna have to spend to get rid of or deal with the fuel tank. But when you put in a boiler like we did with an AFUE rating of about 93, you might qualify for some tax incentives, rebates, some local utility incentives, things like that, that help offset those costs and also uh, speed up your return on investment. Well, that's it from Hadley, Massachusetts. I'd like to thank Osterman Propane for letting us come and watch over their shoulder and also these homeowners for letting us invade their basement for a few days. For more information about propane heating systems, propane tank installation, and other training content, go to buildwithpropane.com. For the Propane Education and Research Council, I'm Rich Binsaka. Thanks for watching.